Welcome! In this tutorial, I'll be answering the following questions for this LP model. I'll also be interpreting the components of LP sensitivity analysis based on this sensitivity report from Excel. First note here that these objective coefficients here are displayed here in the output. We assume these are unit profits for product A, B, and C. And the constraint right-hand sides are displayed here. So let's begin by examining the top part of the table for optimality ranges. The optimal solution is represented by final values here. A equals 0, B equals 70, and C equals 30. So the optimal objective function value can be found by plugging the optimal solution into the objective function to obtain 5850. Now, this allowable increase and decrease values specify how much the objective coefficients can change before the optimal solution will change. For example, since the allowable increase for A is 7.5, if we increase the objective coefficient of A from 50 to any value up to an upper limit of 57.5, the optimal solution will not change. For the allowable decrease, Excel usually represents very large values with 1e plus 30. So you can think of it as infinity. Thus, the lower limit for the coefficient of A is negative infinity. For B, the upper limit will be infinity, and the lower limit will be 60 minus 5, which gives 55. For C, we have 60 for the upper limit, and 40 for the lower limit. So what will happen to the optimal solution if the unit profit on B, that is the coefficient, decreases by 20? We can see here that the allowable decrease on B is 5. Therefore, the optimal solution will change if we decrease it by 20. That is, these final values will no longer be optimal. And what will happen if the unit profit on C decreases to 45 from its current value of 55? You can see here that 45 is between 40 and 60. So the optimal solution will remain optimal, but the total profit now becomes 5550. Next. What will happen if the unit profit on both A and C are changed to 53? Note that this sensitivity report only accounts for one change at a time. So if there are simultaneous changes, as we have here, we have to check if the sum of the ratio of proposed changes to allowable changes is within 100%. If the sum of this ratio is over 100%, the optimal solution may no longer be valid. This is called the 100% rule. The proposed increase in A is 53 minus 50, which is 3, and the allowable is 7.5, giving a ratio of 0 0.4. Whereas for C, the proposed decrease is 55 minus 53, which gives 2, with an allowable decrease of 15, giving a ratio of 0 0.133. The sum of these ratios is 53.3%, which is less than 100%. So the optimal solution will remain optimal, and the total profit becomes 5790. Now let's discuss the reduced cost for A. The reduced cost of negative 7.5 here represents the amount by which profit will be reduced if we include a unit of A in the solution. In essence, product A is not attracting enough profit to warrant its inclusion in the product mix. To include product A, or to make it positive, its profit contribution needs to improve by at least 7.5. But at its current value of 50, making A positive in the optimal solution will bring a reduction of 7.5 to profit per unit. Now, the bottom part of the table titled Constraints addresses the range of feasibility, that is, the range for the right hand side of a constraint where the shadow price remains unchanged. For example, as long as the right-hand side of constraint 1 is between 93.33 and 110, the shadow price of 60 will apply. Shadow price here refers to the amount of change in the optimal objective function value per unit increase in the right-hand side of a constraint. So what will happen to optimal profit if the right-hand side of constraint 1 increases by 5? Notice here that the allowable increase for constraint 1 is 10. So an increase of 5 is allowable. Therefore, the optimal profit will change by 5, the amount of change, times 60, the shadow price, to give 300. Since this is positive, profit will increase by 300 from 5850 to become 6150. 
And what will happen if the right-hand side of constraint 2 decreases to 250? Notice here that the allowable decrease for constraint 2 is 30. The current value is 300, so decreasing it to 250 is a proposed decrease of 50. Since the proposed decrease exceeds the allowable decrease, the shadow price is no longer valid. As a result, we cannot tell what will happen to profit based on this output. We need to resolve the model. Next, how will the objective function change if the right-hand side of constraint 4 changes to 44? The current right-hand side value for constraint 4 is 60. Changing it to 44 represents a decrease of 16 units, which is less than the allowable decrease of 60. Therefore, the shadow price applies and the total profit changes by negative 16 times negative 2.5 to give 40. Since this value is positive, optimal profit will actually increase by 40 to become 5890. For slack and surplus values, we simply take the difference between the final value, that is the left side of the constraint, and the right hand sides. Constraints 1 and 2 are less or equal constraints, so they will be associated with slack variables, while 3 and 4 are greater or equal constraints and will be associated with surplus variables. So the slack value for constraint 1 is 0, and for constraint 2 it is 30. The surplus for constraint 3 is 20, and for constraint 4 it is 0. Lastly, the binding constraints are the ones that have final values equal to the right hand sides, that is, the ones with 0 slack or surplus values. So constraints 1 and 4 are binding, while 2 and 3 are non binding. Note also that the binding constraints have non zero shadow prices. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.